Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Knits by Mandy. My name is Amanda, and today we have the 19th episode of the Knits by Mandy podcast. It is a cool, crisp, autumnal Friday afternoon. I'm looking at all the beautiful leaves from my window. They are turning like deep reds and oranges, but there's still some of that summer green. And it's just time to have a little podcast episode summing up the month of October. This month, I don't have any finished objects to show you all. I'm still very much chugging along on my whips. But I do have quite a fair bit of acquisitions, which is something I don't normally have a lot of at once. I'm usually buying things as I make them, so it's kind of exciting to have a little acquisition session, a little haul section for the for the pop. I am wearing the Very V-neck Raglan by Jessie Main Designs, and this is in Noro Sock Garden Silk Solo that one and the color S1. It's two years ago and it's still a classic. It's definitely like a I'm home and hanging out kind of sweater. It's really short. One day I would love to maybe extend the end and maybe redo the bind off. It's a nice light layer to have in autumn. It's actually quite warm today which is not fun. Don't have any finished objects to share in this episode, but I do have a few whips to share along with acquisitions. So I'll start with my first big project that I'm working on, which is the Folklore Cardigan by Amy Gunderson. When I checked in with you last month, I was just midway through the back panel and I am done with the back panel now and I just finished the left front panel this morning. So here is a look at the back panel in all of its glory. I'm knitting this in Kelborn Woolen's Scouts in the Cutaway Natural and Charcoal Heather. I said this in my last episode. I'm absolutely just like delighted in the way that this yarn is knitting up and I'm very excited um, for what the final object will look like. This is gonna be like the front left panel here. It's quite a long sweater. This piece is for the bind off. It's a slope bind off. This is about 20 inches, 21 inches long. So it's supposed to be oversized, supposed to be really cozy. There were so many mornings where I was looking at my closet this week and I was like, I just want the folklore sweater. Like, I just want to be able to wear it already. And honestly, I kind of thought I'd be farther along in my knitting, but I had kind of a busy October, at least on the weekends, and that's when I get most of my knitting time done. I also have been coming out of a big playing The Sims phase, and that really eats into my knitting time. So I am not feeling called towards The Sims and I am feeling very called towards knitting and finishing this sweater. So hopefully I might be able to have it done by next podcast in November. That would be nice. I would like to be able to work on at least one other sweater before the end of the year. Like this time last year, I think I'd already finished my Ingrid sweater. I'm a little jittery, like I haven't finished an autumn sweater yet and like it's almost Halloween. That's pretty wild, but that's okay. Knitting is not a race. So I'm trying to enjoy the process and I am actually enjoying the process of working on these panels. I think they are taking quite a long time because of their length. Um, so they are quite long. The thing I wanted to touch on is just how I'm going to tackle the rest of the construction of this garment. In theory, you would knit all the panels I think you block items before you seam them. I hadn't done that in the past, but I think that would help. You block them and then like you seam them all together, but I think, and then I'd have to add the button band. So what I think I might do instead is I'm gonna get the other right panel done, seam what I have together to make kind of almost like a vest, and then do the button band there, and then move on to the sleeves. So then my last steps are attaching the sleeves, seaming them together, and then adding buttons. Usually when I feel like a project is dragging on, I like to kind of chop up how I tackle it instead of maybe 
like the more traditional way. It helps break things up and I think it helps me keep a little momentum. So I'm already casting on for the right panel. That's the other thing with the panels too, like you have to just like keep going and I think it's really easy to just like pause and like not want to cast on the next thing because it feels like you're starting from zero again um but you're really not you're just building on what you already have so I am very excited to have this filming this on October 27th so this is uh 1989 Taylor's version release day if you're a Swifty so it's been fun like listening to that today and um, yeah, I'm feeling good about this. I'm wishing I was a little further, but I can't say I'm upset at all. And the pattern's been pretty easy to follow. I found the charts, um, kind of hard to decipher. So I'm relying more on the written instructions. For example, you'll have a 14 stitch repeating pattern and they'll tell you to knit it over 18 stitches. And it's not necessarily clear like which stitches you need to repeat unless you reference the written instructions. That's my only note, but other than that, like obviously I figured it out, um, but it just kind of took me a second on the back and then having to refer to those written instructions again in the front. But once you get going, I mean, especially for the front with the, like it's only, it's technically four different types of cables, but they're really easy um, to remember they're the same types of cables you were doing on the back minus, you know, the diamond repeating. So the easy parts. Once I have to go back and do the diamond on the sleeves, I think I'm gonna forget how. Very easy to remember, I think, once you get to this part, and I think that will hopefully make the right side even fly back, or fly by even quicker. So that is the update for the folklore cardigan. I really hope I can get some serious work done on it this month. Very excited to have it. It's gonna be so cozy, so good, such a good sweater to have. The other whip I have is also kicking off our acquisition session section. And I have a little bit of a local yarn store highlight to share as well, which I'll save, I think, until after I talk about all my acquisitions. But last weekend, I went to Fiber Space in Alexandria. I got a free tote, which was awesome. And I was really on the hunt to find yarns to knit for a new baby in my family. So if you're a part of my family and you don't want to see what I'm knitting for the baby, um, don't watch this part. I don't know what to tell you. Someone in my family is having a baby and I am very excited. This is the first of kind of a new generation in our family, so it's a very big deal. And of course, I do want to start a tradition of knitting for all of the babies in my family. I decided that I wanted to set a goal of making one sweater and one baby blanket that my family member could have something to take pictures with at least. I know that like a sweater for a newborn baby is not maybe the most practical piece of clothing. So I'm kind of making it under the assumption like, yeah, like she'll probably take pictures of the baby, of the baby, of her son in these, but maybe not use them all the time, which that's totally cool. So I went to Fiber Space and I'll show you what I ended up getting. Uh, rare, not rare, but I usually don't work with Superwash, but this time I think for a baby, it's very fitting. Um, I feel like if you're giving wool to a new mom, like that doesn't really make any sense to me uh, unless they're also a knitter, which she is not. So I ended up going with the Barocco Ultra Wool Superwash. Very kind of simple superwash wool. It's $13 for 100 grams and you get 219 yards or 200 meters. So you get a lot of bang for your buck. And I think this would be more of like a worsted weight. So it calls for either like a four and a half or a five millimeter needle. Um, and it's very soft because it is superwash. And I decided for the patterns that I want to go for, I want to make a sweet shop blanket by Laura Penrose and then a just like a regular raglan sweater. I'm using the easy raglan or like very good raglan. I'll link it below. It's a free pattern. I also don't want to like pay for a baby sweater pattern. Like that doesn't seem necessary in my opinion. Maybe for my babies one day. So anyway, let me show you the colors that I got. I've kind of been holding them all up. So for the sweet shop blanket, I want everything to kind of incorporate the same colors. So maybe 
if she wants, she can like use both to take a picture. And if not, like it's okay, but I think it's cute that they match. So the first is I just got the white that I've already been using. And then this is a, they don't have names on them. They just have numbers. So I'll put the numbers below. This is a Heather gray color. Um, and then I decided for the accent colors, I know that she's doing like blues and grays in the nursery. So I had to go for a nice baby Heather blue, kind of keeping with the Heather theme. I was like, do I go for navy? Do I go for more blue and navy? And I was like, no, we need a little bit of whimsy and fun. And I decided to go for this like light sea foam green. So this is what I got at Fiberspace. No shopping was done for me, but I definitely, definitely want to go back there. I went with my knitting friend, Erin, and we were like, oh, we need to make this a quarterly trip because it's a really beautiful store. I'll talk a little more about it later. What I have so far on the sweater, it's just so itty bitty. It's not much yet. And I want to do just little striping down the whole body of the sweater. I think that'd be very cute, very handsome, very dashing. And I like this pattern because it does have short row shaping. So, you know, baby isn't like by the collar and it's pretty stretchy. Um, they have you not switch needle sizes if it's for like a newborn. So that's what I'm going to aim for for now. I would like to have these, he's due in February. I would like to have these done by Christmas time to give to my family member. Maybe you want to make him like a teddy suit, like the, like the petite knit teddy suit. Like that's really cute. But again, that's like, I feel like not the most practical thing. I don't know. I have to think about it, but I think a blanket for a nursery, my grandma used to crochet us stuff and we still have so many crochet blankets in our homes and I know my family member has them too. So I am happy to kind of carry on that tradition as the only fiber artist in the family. That was great. More on fiber space later. That is my really only other whip. I started to cast on something, but I'm gonna have to rip it back. So the next item that I have is some gifted yarn um, from the brand Originally Lovely, and I'll show you that now. So full disclosure, uh, Originally Lovely reached out and they wanted to um, gift yarn, kind of no strings attached, like see what I thought of it. And then we could kind of go from there. And I really enjoyed working with their Lana yarn, which is 100% uh, Andean wool. It's in this color Merlot, which is so beautiful. I love it. Isn't it so nice? So I was gifted, I think, four balls of these, and I think that'd be perfect to make the solo scarf by Kadri. And I have a jacket that almost matches this color exactly, and I think it'd be really fun to have almost kind of like a color washed, monochromatic look for winter accessories. The solo scarf is a triangle shawl-ish shaped scarf that just has some like it's a it's like stockinette broken up with garter very simple very a la like the sophie scarf by petite knit i am not above paying six dollars for a super basic scarf pattern that i could probably figure out myself i'm not above it um if i wanted to figure out i could i think it's really cool i applied to test but i didn't get it which is fine um but i think it'll be a good accessory to have and i've been thinking it might be nice to work on an accessory while I work on that and just have another quick project um, to work on. So I'll give you another look at the yarn. I did make a swatch, let me bring that over. This might have cat hair in it, but this is what the swatch looks like. The yarn itself is like a two ply yarn that has you know, a good amount of like bounce in memory. I won't say this isn't like the softest to the touch yarn, but I think it'll be really nice and warm and hearty for winter accessories. So when I encounter maybe a not like buttery smooth yarn, which this is smooth, it's not scratchy, but it's just not like merino, um, which makes sense because it's not merino. I really start to think of like accessories, warm, cozy like squishy items and I think this will make a really nice like 
structured scarf is the originally lovely Lana. You get about 191 yards per 100 gram. So that's great. I like these like nice big balls of yarn. And I do have an affiliate code to share with you that will be in a description um, if you decide to shop there. There's never any expectation. I think this is like the second time I'm sharing an affiliate code. Yeah, they're there if you want to use them, but no pressure whatsoever but if you want to check out some really beautifully dyed yarns um definitely check out the website the last thing that i have in my basket is something that i bought kind of on a whim but i'm really excited about i unboxed these on my instagram stories last week and these are the sorella autumn tonals i'm not sure if you can get these anymore and if they fully moved to like their autumn in new york i'd have to double check i can confirm with text on the screen um but these are the mini set which i want to make my own sweet shop blanket in um but i'll definitely i think just wait i'm going to focus on baby stuff um in the meantime but i'm gonna have these i think when i'm when I'm done with the baby stuff for me to work on. Maybe a new, like, a good New Year's cast on. I'm just, like, talking about the Sweet Shop blanket as if everyone knows what it is, but I think everyone does. It is... So the Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose is a garter stitch blanket pattern using four different types of squares. So it's in a triangular pattern using, like, one it with like a main color and then one with a contrasting color and um with each on each half of the square i say four squares because they're all made using short rows and there's no seaming involved so very excited i think it looks like a really fun meditative like just like a nice project to kind of have and i have been wanting to have a blanket in my house that i've knit i think that'd be really nice something to hold on to and when i saw these sorella tonals i was like okay i need to get them i'm not gonna read you every single color because i think that might be a little tedious um but i'll go through the bundles which you could get as like as is you could just buy one of these and so the first one is hearth side and let me oh they're naked hearth side has these really gorgeous like mauve pink burgundy tones this reminds me of the yarn i made with my harlow sweater um kind of like an earthy mauve a orange color there are two of these in the set this is the kind of the lighter orange fallen leaf sort of vibe and then a like a whisper of a pink kind of thing it's almost like a bone color but like a little pinky and then another kind of bordeaux maroon wine merlot color um which i really love it's one of my like favorite colors and i think i wear it very well um although i will not be wearing this but also the tactile feeling of a mini is whew, it's nothing really beats this to be honest like i just want to squish them in my hand so that is the hearthside bundle uh the next is the i think it's the reading nook bundle Ooh, very fun and this has a bit more of a mix of colors so it has like a green and orange and then more like purpley pinky colors so a gorgeous olive color we love we love to see her a deeper orange so i mean these oranges are like fairly similar to be honest with you but this is more of like a deeper i think this is called pumpkin spice um and i kind of like that there's two varying ones i think it'll add nice depth and dimension to the finish sassy's just hanging out there she loves it i didn't even notice that I think that'll add nice dimension and then the last three are like this is just kind of like a peachy rose that's not really rose is it it's a light pink ballet slipper kind of deal a oh i love this color i would knit a sweater in this color this is a very knits by mandy color uh just like a lavender dusty purple i'm always here for that and then 
Again, very similar to a color in the other. This is the new one. This is the other palette. Um, a deeper kind of purple, a deeper version of that. The way that I think Sorella thinks and uses color is fascinating. Um, and whenever I watch like the daily palette stories, it I'm always just like, you're describing colors in a way that I can't even begin to think of. But I guess that makes sense. If you're dyeing them, you should really understand the subtleties and nuances of color. Color theory is very fascinating. Okay, so so far I've shown you a lot of like deep pinks, purples, oranges, a green, mauves, and now we also have some cool tones. And these are in the Day Hike pack. So this we have um, just like a white color, like a cream. I would honestly call this natural. I'm not sure if this is even dyed. It's maybe a little gray undertoned, um, but I think that'll be fun. Maybe to have just some like fully white squares in the blanket. A beautiful royal blue, which I think is stunning. I like this and I said this on my stories. Some of these colors, I wouldn't think of like a dark royal blue as necessarily autumnal, but I think these all work together in a really lovely way. Um, the next is this kind of teal um, color. Maybe folks might call this like a petrol blue. And I love this. A lot of colors that I wouldn't necessarily make a full garment out of. And so this just felt like the right thing to do. I don't know. I felt called. I bought these all with my own money. Like this isn't sponsored. Um, and this is a more like sky blue color. And then finally, finally a, oh, Sassy's on the counter. This is like a more bluish dark green. So here we have like more of like an olive, right? And then more of a a dark green with the with a blue undertone. Sorry, I'm not as good at Ashley as describing these colors. So overall, I get 12 minis and that will yield two squares. Um, each from these held double, I'm pretty sure. So that's pretty great. I think it'll, they'll take me a long way. And these, by the way, are 80% superwash wool and 20% nylon. So they're like a soft yarn, but hopefully that will help with the durability of this blanket. I might need to buy more of the white Barocco yarn as it is for this for the baby blanket and I might end up doing that for this although I might need to go down a gauge in, in the Barocco because that's like a worsted and this will be like a DK. So here's all of the beautiful yarns together. I love these colors and I love that they are like a rainbow without being rainbow-y and I just like the different depth and dimension this whole palette has. So excited to make a blanket out of this. You might not see these for another while again. I was very excited to kind of like get some minis. It felt like kind of special and nothing that I have done before. I know something that a lot of knitters enjoy is buying minis and doing advents. I didn't necessarily want to sign up for anything that I don't know what the colors are going to be. It's just like a lot of money, to be honest, to not know. I understand the appeal for some folks, but it's not my cup of tea, really. So excited to have these. Probably won't see these for a little bit. Um, but yeah, that was a big acquisition that came in this month that I've just been really happy about. I'm just excited to have these on my shelf. I'm usually not that kind of girl who's like, I need yarn to look at, and I don't, but it's nice to have. It is really nice to have. So excited to have these minis. I will stop gushing about them. As a child of YouTube, it feels very like 2011 Christmas, what I got for Christmas haul beauty YouTuber to like show you all this yarn that I bought, but it is fun to kind of switch it up a little and I'm excited for some of the projects that I'm working on this fall. I'm editing and I realized that I did not give a review of Fiber Space and I want to briefly talk about it. Uh, I just like highlighting local yarn stores. People do ask me when they're visiting DC, where should I go? And now I can fully say that I would recommend going to both Looped and DuPont Circle, but if you're in the Northern Virginia region, Fiber Space in Alexandria is also a must visit spot. Uh, I will compare the two just briefly. Looped is great. 
I love looped. However, it is a bit smaller than fiber space. Like fiber space basically takes up this whole house in Old Town Alexandria. Everything is organized like pretty meticulously by weight. And they have a ton of brands that I've never seen before. They have a ton of Noro. They have a lot of Blue Sky Fibers, a bunch of Barocco, which I have seen before, Knitting for Olive. They have a really cute outdoor area where you can sit and knit as well as an outdoor, an outdoor, an upstairs area as well. There's even an area for kids to play. And they also have a ton of samples which is something that I think Loop, ha Loop has some, but not a ton of. Um, so those are really nice to see like yarns in action and then also just certain patterns that you've you know heard about. You can see them in their sample section. They also have a huge book selection and a huge notions selection. Um, overall, it was just a really cool store to visit. I would definitely recommend it. I. I mean, there's not many stores that I wouldn't recommend going to. In like the Washington DC DMV area, looped in DuPont, fiber space in Alexandria. There's also, I've been wanting to try a secondhand craft store in Alexandria. It's a little further out from Old Town, um, but it's called Upcycle. And I definitely wanna try that out sometime next year, maybe. Um, and it might be a good place to drop off some items that I'm not using anymore too. So. That is my little review and we'll go back to the video. So I have to be honest with you all. I haven't really watched anything or read anything worth recommending lately, which is a little dark and a little scary. I'm still keeping up with Housewives. Since this is already kind of a shopping and acquisition heavy episode, I figured this was a good segue to mention the vendor list from the Woolen Folk Festival that happened last weekend. This is last weekend as I'm filming it. The Rhinebeck Festival was last weekend and an offshoot event called Woolen Folk was the Friday or the, the Thursday and Friday before. Um, and because from what I understand the Rhinebeck New York Sheep and Wool Festival has been around for so long, it's harder for some of the newer indie dyers to get vending spaces there. So these offshoot events have kind of cropped up over the years uh, for these indie dyers to come. And, you know, while knitters are in the area, they can come visit these other events and see some dyers they might not have seen. For a lot of reasons, the event ended up not going very well. Uh, I'm not going to get totally into it, but there was a venue change. The venue was not accessible. It was just not set up well or efficiently. It seems like the organizers were pretty apathetic to both the experience of the vendors and the customers that went. It was like a lose-lose for both of those parties. I might do a whole separate window shopping of the vendor list. Uh, like right after this filming this video um, but I wanted to just to mention it in this section because a lot of people from what I understand made a great financial investment to go to this festival thinking they would get a return on that um, and I, it doesn't sound like they did. The list is there for you to check out. There's like 92 small businesses on there. It's a lot um, but I thought I'd mention it. Uh, I was again I was not there there is a no dearth of people retelling their experiences from like large creators like Lola Bean Yarn Co and Explore Knits and Fibers. Um, they're all there if you kind of want to hear more and kind of get into it. Only was it unfortunate for these small businesses, but also that it wasn't accessible to folks with disabilities or even like people without disabilities. It just wasn't a comfortable, safe, environment for anyone in the community to be in. So that's from my understanding. Again, it wasn't there. So that is the little highlight I'm going to put in this section of the episode. And I'm going to leave it there. I hope to have some finished objects for you next month. And I hope you all are staying safe. And I will see you all soon. Bye.